Welcome, friends. It's almost midnight, and you've found your way to the Pikecast. Come along as we careen through the catalog of the most formative horror writer of our young adult days, Christopher Pike. From adult perspectives, we'll revisit these YA books our parents probably would never have let us read had they known what lie inside. We tackle one book per episode in a freewheeling and unbiased chat. So grab your battered paperback, pull the flashlight from the kitchen drawer, climb under your bed covers, and devour a good book with us. Greetings, fellow pikers, and welcome to the Pike Cast. I'm Cooper Beckett, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my lovely co host, Cassie. Hello. Today, we are digging into Christopher Pike's 1990 book, See You Later, and we're going to be dissecting it in great detail, spoiling each and every plot twist, so consider yourself warned. If you're enjoying the Pikecast, please do leave us a review on the podcast service of your choice. Now let's welcome our returning guest piker this week, freelance writer mostly covering entertainment, pop culture, women's health, and relationships, Danielle Sepulveres. Delighted to have you back, Danielle. Hi, so good to be here again. And and happy to have you jump in at the last minute. That that's uh yes. wow. that's really helpful. <laughs> anytime. You know me, anytime with Christopher Pike and of course with you guys. <laughs> Well, we know Pike's the main draw. We understand. Don't worry. <laughs> we're all we're all connected by our love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it is it is so funny because like every week I see comments popping up on Twitter like, "Oh my god, how did I not know this was a thing?" Yeah. And, yeah. You know, like I want to be able to tell them it's a thing, but I don't know how to find them. I don't yeah. uh, <laughs> beyond beyond who we've already found, I have no yeah. idea how to find them. <laughs> I know it's it's hard. On I mean, I'm so grateful I found you guys because of BJ, right? BJ Colangelo. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because I w- I guess I was tweeting about Christopher Pike, and BJ was like, "Oh, hey, did you not know about this podcast?" And I was, of course, no, I did not. <laughs> but now it's my new favorite podcast. <laughs> I think the word of mouth thing is how a lot of people are finding out because, yeah. like, I'll see one person posting about it, and then other people will comment on that post, and they're like, "How did I not know this is a thing?" Yeah, it's true. Word of mouth. Really, really powerful. Well, since we don't have to ask you all the standard questions because you've been Mm -hmm. here twice before. Yes. um, I have the longest response uh, a listener has ever given us to one of our Ask the Listeners questions. Okay. And it is from a, a user named Milton on YouTube. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yes. I'm going to waste my time trying to create a unified pike verse reptile people origin. The good thing is they're so similar, I don't have to tweak how they work. The bad part is that the origins vary wildly in the timeline, so I'm going to need a little elbow grease to grease them into place. Evil psychic reptile people evolve on Earth during dinosaur times, formed a planetary hive mind and colonized Mars and an unnamed fifth planet. There was a war, they wiped themselves out completely on Earth and severely weakened the Mars colony. Fifth Planet got off fine, but because they're all evil, they don't give a fuck and advance more, colonizing more of the galaxy with their mind powers. These far-off colonies will eventually return for all those times reptilian aliens appear in Pike's book. Like the Were there reptilian aliens in The Last Vampire? Uh... Because he mentions the last vampire, and it confused me. Yeah, I don't remember reptilian. Maybe they come in one of the other books that we haven't read yet. That could be, yeah. Yeah. And the star group. Time passes, humanity evolves, war happens, and the fifth planet gets blown up. At this point, reptile people were such powerful psychics that their hive mind persisted just in their blood, which contained microbes, blah, 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 leading into monster. However, the aftermath of planetary destruction wrecks the human civilization and it's forced to start over. Thousands of years later, a prosperous human civilization lives in a lush valley that escaped most of the ecological destruction earlier. Mars has started being inhospitable for the reptilians living there and they get into conflict with the humans. 
Sun goddess queen tortures, uh, torches Mars, but that reptile devil overlord uses ritual magic to do a supernatural version of what the fifth planet inhabitants manage through science. So they can also turn people into vampires and transfer consciousness. Way better, thanks to magic. But their brand of vampirism has way more complications than the simple bacterial infection method. Season of Passage set up, and by the way, there are now at least three vampirism strains in this universe, but the one featured in the last (laughs) vampire books is the best due to being the product of the most quote, modern reptile variant, making a proper hybrid with its semi-alive blood in the form of Yaksha. If it wasn't for that silly idea about the destruction of the fifth planet leading to the creation of the asteroid belt, I'd just combine the monster and season of passage origins and make it ambiguous whether Mars was ruined because of the sun goddess queen or ancient astronauts. The cursed Martian meteor landing in a lake was a bit of bad luck, unrelated to the plan to corrupt the astronauts who set foot on Mars to reincarnate the reptile king. And the Avengers event of this Pike verse would be the returning reptile lady from that earlier book coming back and teaming up with Sita and the protagonist from Monster to stop Reptile King from taking over the rest of the world and spreading his brand of vampirism. Angela. Her name is Angela. Angela, yes. <laughs> I mean, this is I, – I, you can see why I had to read the whole thing. No, that's that, <clears throat> that's very thought out. That is yes. very thought out. And we appreciate we do. the fuck out of it. We do. Wait, j- <laughs> just so we're clear, though, the vampires are the are the reptiles? Are the vampires are the re- reptiles? It, it seems like that, yeah. That, okay, that's what I okay. got out of that. <laughs> Maybe that explains why I like them both so much when they're in the books. I'm like, yes, give it to me. Reptiles, vampires, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and if you take that, that sort of flexible origin, then that allows you to really capture the other ones like Scavenger Hunt, which isn't exactly clear what it's talking about because of the portal to the other dimension, which could be the other world, which could be another planet, which could be, you know, whatever. I love it. Oh my God. It is. Uh, I, I'm starting to doubt that my my fandom to Christopher Pike, <laughs> that, that <laughs> I, I, I've, I've, been thrown into the throes of doubt by this person and their very well thought out <laughs> foundation. I mean, honestly, I don't remember half of the things they said. So um, <laughs> considering that I'm hosting the podcast, I am forgetting more about Pike than they probably know. So <laughs> yeah, it's... it's because we have to be really focused on the book at hand in order That's to truly really discuss it. But if we were to like go back and listen for even just a couple minutes, I'm sure we'd be like, oh, yes, I remember all of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a good point. Because right so now really I don't the... have a brain for reptiles. All I can remember is time travel and weird space orbs. <laughs> that's all I've got. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's use that transition then to move <laughs> us into magic fire, and we'll start with the back of the book that we're sorry, Cassie, Shit. is very 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 long. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, here we go. <clears throat> he fell in love with the right girl at the wrong time. I really, they could have just left that. That could have just been. Yeah, that, yeah. that really, that, that should have just been on the cover and then they could put just quotes on the back. You know, they don't, <laughs> yes. they don't need anything special. Mark has just graduated from high school and has just fallen in love for the first time. The girl's name is Becky. Unfortunately for Mark, Becky has a boyfriend. Mark tries his best, but he is unable to win Becky for himself. Then Mark meets a young couple, Vincent and Kara. Both look extremely familiar to him, although he could swear he's never seen them before. They quickly become good friends. Kara does not want Mark to give up on Becky. In fact, Kara is obsessed that Mark and Becky get together. Kara comes up with an elaborate scheme to break up Becky and her boyfriend. Mark thinks the scheme cruel. He tries to stop Kara. He doesn't succeed. Suddenly, (laughs) Becky is a free woman, and Mark can't help but ask her out on a date. Then, things start to get very strange. An evil man appears out of nowhere. Somebody is kidnapped. Somebody is tortured. Kara knows what is happening, but she refuses to talk. She has good reason not to, for no one would believe the story she has to tell. But in the end, Mark does believe her, when all he loves appears to be lost and the world stands on the verge of destruction. Dun, dun, dun. Again, I am so happy I didn't fucking read that before I read the book. Why is this the back of the book? It's terrible. 
It's there's so terrible. much he did this and then she did this and it didn't I mean, go first of all, it's very this. inaccurate. And yes. second, it just leads you into big plot twists that you yep. have no business thinking about before you read the book. I feel like that that was one of my biggest issues with it because like, you know, I hadn't read this in such a long time, so I had mm-hmm. to remember. And I when I read the back of the book, I go, "Oh, right, this is the one where I guessed what was going on because of the back of the book." And oh I was God. really mad that I knew from the back of the book like, "Oh, this is like them in the future." Clearly. Yeah, I, I think if I had read that, I would have guessed that too. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I saw how long it was before I started reading it like two hours ago. And I was like, no. And then I just opened the book because I was like, there's no way that's taking time away from the reading I could be doing inside the book. And I'm on a schedule. I'm not fussing oh, yeah. around with that. So when I saw and then you, I, I knew too, I was like, he's going to make me read it in the episode. So I can, I'll read it then for the first time. Totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's better when you read it for the first time. Really, you should never read the back of Pike books because they're either so inaccurate as to not even be funny or they wait they tell you way too much really yeah, that's they're too the two accurate types or they're too books. inaccurate <laughs> yes so weird. this one is almost both <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little of both <laughs> it's a little bit of both it's like they gave you a spoiler and then realized they gave you a spoiler <laughs> and tried to steer you in another direction without you know realizing they didn't have to give you the spoiler because editing right yeah that's that's exactly what it is <laughs> Well, let's let's look at the artwork, and this is a pretty classic uh, Kotsky cover here. Oh yeah, I like it. Like you can see the city in the background, like where the oh like, yeah, I didn't notice that. Like you it. do see LA, the yeah. grid in the background there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, the little, like trees and the big old telescope. I didn't, uh, to be fair, I didn't know how big the telescope was when I was reading it, and that seems large. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with it. That's, well, that's was, a nice telescope. Uh, you don't was, just look at the the moon with that. You know, nineteen ninety, you, you, right? <laughs> yeah, nineteen ninety. What do you mean you don't just look at the moon with that? What does that mean? Is that a, just, like a dirty joke? I'm saying there are, there are some telescopes <laughs> that are so low powered that really all you can do is watch for people getting naked in apartments or look at the moon because you're not going to see rings on Saturn. Wait, Saturn. I'm not clear though. Which one is this? Then <laughs> is this is this this is, is the good <laughs> kind. So, wait, the feature of good is not the naked people? It's the moon? Well, I mean, you don't need a telescope to look for naked people. If they're far enough away. First of all, that's a very expensive way to see naked people. <laughs> okay, look, I'm well, not arguing that. I just I just didn't know how big a telescope I... should be. <laughs> <laughs> Can I quickly digress on this seeing naked yes, people? <laughs> because um, I uh, I worked on a show last year and we were filming in this one apartment. It was a Friday night and it, everything was like very lit up in the apartment we were in. And then the building across the way, it was very dark and we could see everything that was going on in there. Oh. And, and there was a lot of stuff that was going on. And it was really funny because like, we're all just you're getting ready to work, and all of a sudden somebody goes, "Whoa, whoa! <laughs> somebody's somebody's having a Friday night over there." So of course, like we're all pressed up against the glass and watching. And somebody said, "They're like, too bad we don't have a telescope." <laughs> <laughs> it was just see, really it's funny everybody's <laughs> first instinct, really. If you have a telescope <laughs> in a room yeah. and you see something happening, you're just gonna look. <laughs> It was, and it was going on for like a long time. And then the funniest part about it is that, because I honestly, I couldn't see, I I saw more like silhouette of stuff happening. And then mm-hmm. at one point they, I think they were outside on the balcony and I go, oh my God, I saw these people downstairs outside the building. <laughs> I was like, I, I saw them pre-sex. Holy shit. <laughs> As if they're celebrities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a glimpse of them while they were dressed. It is very exciting. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry to sidebar. No, that's a, that's no, a good no. digression. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's why you guys invite me on. Yes. Yeah, we for need your, these stories. It's true for your your sexy side jaunts. <laughs> well, somebody else's sexy side jaunts that she was witnessing. Yes, exactly. That's yes. true. Yes. No, that's I, I, you're right. You're right. You're I, right. That's, I that's think true. everybody went home that Friday night like, oh man. <laughs> well, back to the book cover at hand here. <laughs> 
Uh, so I, I suppose we're meant to think the Eye of Sauron is the time travel device that may or may not exist. And that's something we'll deal with when we get into the plot. Right. Yeah. And I mean, we 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 have three people on this cover. And honestly, here's the thing. You know, we've we've done a lot of episodes recently where we talk about having way too fucking many characters. Yes. This book has when you really think about it four yeah cuz they're all they're each other's doppelgangers <laughs> yeah and then stoner ted and stoner that's really ted. it poor ted <laughs> poor ted poor ted but so yeah no you're I, right cuz yeah it's i have it's to yeah the i have same to call people attention to that fact with yeah. with two different names <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's weird because of that uh, so accurately capture what's inside, sure, but mm. is what I'll give it. Yeah, I mean, a there story are a lot of, of caves in the mountains around L.A. that Pike likes to hang out in. Yes, yeah. There's, I know we'll talk about this when we get more into it, but there is, as reading this one, there were other books that came to mind. <laughs> well, not just the one he explicitly called out with Starlight Crystal. Right. Oh my God. I mean, that was, yeah, that's the blatant one. But then also, I guess because he's uh, a teen, a very successful teenage kid, it made me think of Master of Murder again. Yeah, totally. That's true. Although and, I uh, think yeah. I I like the, uh, the way this one wraps up better than Master of Murder. <laughs> it was like, it, although it was a different thing that he was doing and selling, he was the exact like same type of person about it though. Cause he was like, and then I walked up to the person who was looking at my video game slash book no, and agreed. I talked to them agreed. about it because why wouldn't I do that? And I was just picturing Pike the whole time again. Like I was like, I know you did this. I know you're doing this. Like, this is you, <laughs> this is you. And you put it, you're making two characters do you right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> These, like, well, these, why don't we move these, into these the Midnight successful. Club and start talking about those characters there? Yes. So we'll start with Mark Forum, who mm -hmm. has a pen name, Tom <laughs> Cleary, for no reason, because it really has nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, he has a reason for it. It's just that name is irrelevant. No, I yeah. mean, I mean, there's no reason. He has a reason, yes. The book doesn't. Right. Oh, no, no, no. No, Tom Cleary does yeah. not come back. It's completely stupid. Yeah, it's, it's completely... Yeah. The only reason it's there is so he can have the little, well, I can't prove it to you. I just am him. And actually, when I first started reading it uh, for a brief second, I thought, wait, is this the one with the time travel or is this the, or is this one? And I was getting it confused with, um, that Stephen King, the dark half where his, his pen oh, name. Oh yeah. With the, with the, yeah. uh, pseudonym yeah. that comes yes. to life. Yes. Yes. The pseudonym who comes to life and starts killing people in his life. And then I'm like, oh yes. no, no, that's Stephen King. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. You have a, a paper clip going through an eyelid and popping the eye inside. Oh. Also, yeah, I don't know if y'all know, but they that's one of the only, or like, it, it might be the only, if not one of the few of his books, King's books, that's been made into a video game. And I wrote an article on it for Unnerving Magazine comparing the book. Wait, it was made into movie. a video game? Yeah. I, I compared the oh. video game, the book, and the movie in an article for it because it's wild. It's like it's oh, really? I want to read that. We'll put look it in. It uh, look up the video game. We'll put it in yeah. the um, the show notes. The, yeah, the, I want to find it on um, or you well, not the article, but the, well, I can link you guys that. But you can find yeah. the if you look up the video game like on YouTube, you could find a like a walkthrough or like a playthrough really? of it and see what it looks like. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely want to read that. So Mark is a pretty typical Pike hero. In mm -hmm. that he's sort of shy, he's sort of creepy at times, he, he's uh, really pushing himself on someone who's clearly in a relationship. He thinks of himself as the nice guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I I cringe at that now. Like, oh, but I'm the mm -hmm. nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. even says too, he's I, like, nobody likes the nice guy. Like, oh, how sad. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he yeah. does the wine, the nice guy wine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the funny thing about this too, because, you know, there were certain parts like that where I'm sure you both did too. You rolled your eyes and you're like, oh, this, okay. But, and then I 
I'm thinking, okay, well, it's 1990 because that's that's pretty normal for the time. Um, and also the whole continuing to ask a girl out who's turning you down to to try to like yeah. wear her down. Um, but I will say it does it does seem slightly progressive for the time that when presented with a scheme to win her that he was very much like this oh, this yeah. does feel mean like this doesn't yeah. you know she's it's not my business she seems happy and yes like i love her but he almost like he was content to just be in love with her from afar and occasionally ask her out and have ice cream with her even though he knew it wasn't going to go anywhere and then isn't there a part in the book too where he says if um if her boyfriend was out of the picture and she still didn't want him then he would have no excuse like it would be more painful for him right just because he's unlovable you you gotta judge him on the sliding scale of pike heroes yeah and as we mentioned the master of murder (laughs) author is much creepier (laughs) and let's say die softly die softly uh, you know there's the whole camera in the girl shower room oh right there aren't a whole lot of pike male heroes in the the (laughs) teen books there are more in the adult books yeah but so so at the you know he's not bad he's just kind of white bread just kind of generic i think yeah so much so that when they introduce the other version of him he's far more interesting Yes, Vincent I thought he was a is... vampire. I didn't read this one when I was. <laughs> I was so excited because they were like, "He's got long." They okay. They ex- they he's described pale. him like, "Yes, he's pale. Yeah. He's tall. He's like thin. He's got like dark, like long blonde hair." Like that, I was like, "This is a vampire. He's clearly a vampire." And then they were, he was like, "Oh, and then you're gonna meet my girlfriend." I was like, "Yes, a vampire girl." Like I was so excited. And then, <laughs> like, then we get later, and I was I was like, "Oh, okay. They're this is going in a different direction. I don't think they're gonna suck blood. This isn't. Uh, I don't think that's this." <laughs> <laughs> I was really disappointed. <laughs> oh man! I mean, not by the whole book. Just to be clear, not no, by no, book, I, I guess. By, by oh, them yeah, not being no. vampires, because they set right. it up so well. Like, of any stays they indoors. Did. Like, he just plays mm-hmm. video games in this creepy little like house, like I a mean, creepy big house. It's yeah. again the kind of the kind of story where you could see Pike just writing seat of his pants. Yes, and then getting yes. to the big monologue and being like, "Okay, well, what is she going to explain that they are?" Yeah. Right. Okay, yes, it's this it's, one. It's, yes, let's do right. that. Because really, before that monologue, still it could have gone in any direction. Yes, it totally could have. And you're right. It, there there were so many moments that felt like he just thought of things on a whim. Like when she's like, oh, they gave us these precious jewels and we traded them in and we bought Ferraris. <laughs> oh, my God. I love the precious jewels part. Yeah, it's like he made up his mind. He was like, finally, we're going to go with this. And she does her whole monologue. And then like later on, he's like, I didn't actually like that epilogue. Here's what actually happened. Yeah, right. Because that bitch is crazy. Like that was that's how it felt. Okay, well, that, like, well, we're, we're, we're way off track here. We got to get back to the Midnight Club. <laughs> get back to the midnight club mark has a heart defect yep his hair is dark and curly his eyes are deep and intelligent according to him right but he he fully acknowledges that he is underweight without muscles as well yeah who thinks these like the things about his eyes and stuff who thinks that about deep themselves and it's intelligent so I mean, no, that's that's good, healthy uh, self-image, then. <laughs> that's something. <I> <laughs> sure. yeah, you're right. It is something. He's a computer <laughs> programmer, and I, I mean, this this goes with we we had this discussion the last time with uh, where we had a computer and how much uh, RAM was in the computer, and I really enjoyed that. <laughs> When he's when he's going to see the uh, computer of Vincent's, yeah, he asks what the RAM is, and then Pike explains the RAM or random access memory determined how much space the computer had to work with at any one moment. The greater the RAM, the more exotic a program could be, and the answer is a megabyte, <laughs> which I'll be honest was huge. Yes, in, it was in 1990. It's just it always it always uh, tickles me to no end when we get that kind of detail. Yes, we also have him talking about the the uh, CD, the compact disc player. He had to scrape to buy and 200 CDs, which it would have been expensive then. 
It seems like yes. a lot, though, too. Like 200? Is. 200 is a lot of CDs. I mean, yeah. I had 200 CDs, but CDs got down to like $6, you know, so I get it. It's expensive. Yeah, I don't remember having that many CDs at that age. I mean, thankfully, MP3s came out and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> well, let's move to Becky. I've got a lot of description about Becky. Uh -huh. Her teeth were white. This is our first bit of description about her. Her <laughs> teeth were white and straight. Her eyes big and brown. I estimated her height at 5'2", her weight at 100 even. I often do that, mentally record people's vital statistics. Her long, dark hair possessed a remarkable shine. She was on the thin side, but had enough curves to conjure up interesting images in my head. Oh, Pikey, That's about the naughtiest bastard. this book gets, honestly. <laughs> it's true. This is one of the few where there's like... It is this... very chaste. Yes, it is. So what do we think about Becky? Fine. She's just, yeah, she's just fine. Yeah. She's not as interesting as her future self. Yes, agree. No, that's true. I mean, yeah. neither of them are. So, no. So that. But that we're makes in his them... head, so I think it makes it a little more, at least, I don't know, yeah. compelling to be with him versus her, which is just like, why do you like this girl in the record store again? Like, yeah. wouldn't this have been Strange. interesting from her point of view? I think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yes. I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. That I think that would have put a whole new sheen yeah. on this or even like alternating viewpoints that would have given it a really interesting because the problem is as soon as he knows it we know it so like there's not there's i mean again that's plot so let's move back to vincent yeah. now <laughs> and uh he's here's your vampire discussion his hair was longish and pale blonde and he had a few more muscles than i did although we were about the same height his eyes were a piercing blue. He drove a black Testarossa Ferrari, one of the fastest cars on the road. Pike does fetishize Ferraris. He loves yeah. like fancy, expensive cars. He does, and he, he, he yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I get it. It's fine. You know, he, he's the world was very obsessed. I mean, I guess everybody's still obsessed with cars. It is, I'm, just, yeah. I'm not. It's, it's not just only the cars too, but it's like such a, such a specific picture of like America, like the California, the blonde girls, the cars yeah. that we always have, like the McDonald's, like it's so specific and like, it's perfect for the time these books were <laughs> like done. It's oh just, yeah. 100%. This. Yeah. I mean, and th so this is 90. So 90 was the beginning of 90210. That's right. So we're seeing that same um, essential class of mm -hmm. people in these books. Yeah, I mean, such as I mean, like you said, it's it's still a status status symbol. But you know, how many TV shows and well, TV shows and movies did you see where they immediately set the stage for a rich, successful character driving a yeah. very specific kind of car? And it it is. I mean, like. Cassie, I totally get why you thought vampire. <laughs> yeah. like they bring it. him to oh, a yeah. house that's barely furnished, which is basically Sita's place in the last vampire. Uh, the like they're rich. The people are she's like rich. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's interesting. I never, I didn't consider that. I knew something was wrong with them, but I didn't consider vampires. I'm surprised. I think because I had just heard lizard people from reading that. <laughs> That, uh, thing. So like, I just assumed people. they were lizard people. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they weren't lizard people, I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised when they weren't evil. Like I, I, they feel also so that, evil. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, and I mean, we do have, um, what's it called? Uh, Chanine from yes. season of passage that, that shows up again here. Okay, so the Shanin were the aliens in Season of Passage, right? Yes, they were. Yeah, Shanin was, uh, she was the, the good queen who was not oh, yes. a vampire. So, yes, right. Yeah. The, so in, and in this, she's queen of the universe. 
I would have loved this if I had read this one when I was younger at the same time I had read the others because this one has so much of the stuff from those that I would love. So I, I wish I'd read this one as a kid. I'm glad we read it now. But And so Starlight Crystal comes out in 96. And Season of oh. Passage is 92. So Wait, he recycled is- these names. He just took it from so that book hadn't even been written at the time of this. Oh no, no. So this is this is all his plot balloons. Like he uses yeah. titles that he'll use again later. He uses ide- like Season of Passage being a movie they go to see in one it of those was a earlier time books. travel love couple. It's like he wanted to tell that story too in here, but it's like he was writing this one and got the idea for that one because there are so many similarities especially between the couples and their instant love like Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. That's see that's why I said I think I would have loved this one cuz that one I that was like my favorite when I was a kid. <laughs> so funny i know sorry i know I, I i know not everybody likes starlight crystal okay but that was my jam oh, it's, it's okay <laughs> you don't have to apologize for liking starlight crystal. no 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 I'm, not, I'm just apologizing for y'all who anybody who didn't because obviously i'm oh the i see about it. <laughs> i mean i mean it, it's sort of like our apologies for anyone who did like final friends so you that's know. true that is absolutely like, true we, yeah. we will have different opinions than you that's just yeah. it yeah yeah All right, it let's move on to kara Kara, I like her. She's sassy and she like knows what she wants and does it. She doesn't give a fuck about what anybody else is telling her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She she is the typical Pike uh best friend, basically. She's she's not the main female character. She's the side female character that he's she sort gets, of gets positive about and also <laughs> negative about. Yes. She would be a, a sugar sister because she would be like, yes. it needs to be done. I'm gonna do it. She has a cheerful English accent that's actually a Scottish accent, right? Yeah. Okay, so we just think it's an English accent at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, Which she, she her, dropped her later. Her hair fell well past her waist, a mass of tiny golden curls that clung to her like a warm embrace. Her mouth was wide. <laughs> oh, my God. As she smiled, her red lips parted, revealing perfect white teeth. Apparently, Kara wore the pants in the relationship, though she had a dress on at present, a loose knee-length skirt that showed off her shapely legs. Whenever I think of Kara, I see her spinning around me in a short dress. That never happened. Why would he think of that? I don't know. So I I remember reading that and thinking, like, why do you see her doing that? I expected that to happen later. And when it never did, I was like, (laughs) what the hell? Whenever I see her, she's doing that. Why? Did she ever do that with you? What the? This is so strange. It's like it's a fantasy version of her. That that makes sense because he seems to be in his head a lot about what he thinks these people yeah. are versus what they. It even directly like references that and like mentions it, which, yeah, that was a realistic thing I think for a lot of people. That's like the manic pixie dream girl thing. He's like meeting these girls and he's like, oh, "Whoa, totally, yes, totally. oh my god, yes." And and that is definitely a re. I mean, really, Pike. Pike's love interests are often either the manic pixie dream girl or what is the guy equivalent of that? Oh, hmm. super stud with messy hair. Who's, who's also sensitive or sick or 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 dying. He he loves, he loves his frail guys like, uh, and, um, and well, and they all, they, the frail ones have to be heroes. Um, like what's his name in scavenger hunt. Yeah. In the the guy in the wheelchair. Oh yeah, right. I don't Which, remember uh, his name though. I don't remember anybody's yeah, name for that, but I remember the purple yeah. guts. Yeah, honestly, I don't remember names of most of these characters now. I just remember and Angela he- Warner because A and W, so that's really <laughs> <laughs> that stuck with me as like a thirteen year old. It has never right, gone away. A and W. I I, I, mean, I and actually... this is thirty five episodes in here. So we've read thirty five Pike books. It's a lot of names. Last. It's it a, lot, a of lot of names. names. I will say, interestingly enough, he does recycle a lot. Of, like Ray. Ray yeah. was the one I'm pretty – like in one of the other books, that was the one the girl slept with at the floor and there was an aquarium with fish watching her. I'm pretty yeah. sure yes. that was Ray. The, the fish yep. watching yeah. you. The things yes. that stick with me. <laughs> well, and it's funny because he uses the same first names, but last names, which are so diverse in general, he invents these weird-ass <laughs> last names. Yeah. <laughs> Like this one is forum. Yeah, that's just a word, sir. That's, that's not a, just a word. Yeah, I mean, like, it, like it's a menu. Is, yeah, it's, it's a menu. It's really odd. 
It is. Well, speaking of Ray, I honestly have no idea if at any point Ray or Frederick get a description because I did not see one. Oh, he, I, it, when they're in the bookstore, I think he describes him, right? Because he's like, yes, he's like Bre- muscular and tall mm-hmm. and he's like a big okay. jockey looking dude. I think with, I think he said he had brown hair. I might be making that up. Yes. Gotcha. No, I think but you're right. I remember brown hair and muscular. Bigger like, than not him, definitely like, too. Yes. Like not like big, big, but bigger than him. No, and, he was um, like, he's going to beat me up. I don't want this. I'm going to go hide in yeah. this other section. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was I feel really like it was though. Yeah, I feel like it was like that he was well dressed. He had and yes. yeah, it was like well dressed, brown hair and um and like strong arms is, yeah. is what is he was coming like to mind for me. Yeah. yeah. And then Frederick, I just assumed is that plus a little bit more military esque. Yeah. I think maybe they it, say yeah. how he looks too toward the end, but I don't I don't remember it to be honest, because I think that was when the guy was about to get his throat slit on the floor. And so I was like invested in what was happening at the moment. Like I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, I think I was too. <laughs> yeah, because that, that was the first time he sees him, like the main character sees him. So Mark's like right. coming through the eyes of the other guy and there's a lot going on. So I, I honestly spaced it, but I think they made it so that he was a little bit different, which I guess to throw them, honestly, I'm. We I can wait, obviously, but it just I don't understand how none of them realize that these so you're looking <laughs> no, at yourself. I know. And it's just, I know. You make out with your girlfriend, your future girlfriend, who's the same age and shape and size as your current girlfriend, yeah. but you don't know. It's bizarre. Oh God, it's there, yeah. there's a lot about the resolution that, in upon reflection, does not work for me. There's a lot yes. of the whole thing that when you try to yeah. think about it, like after finishing the book, and you're like, wait, what the fuck did I read? Like I none of this makes like, sense. None of it makes sense, but no, maybe that's let's, why let's, uh, so much of it right, uh, the, gets well, recycled yeah. in other books. Let's <laughs> stick with the Midnight Club. I know we're raring to go. We only have one more character. Wait, sorry. Who are yeah, we on right now? Ted. Ted. Oh, Ted. Ted. Ted the Stone. Ted Ted. reeks of marijuana smoke, <laughs> and he calls time clocks. Just killing <laughs> clocks, babe. Got to put in the clocks <laughs> to get paid. <laughs> That's He's it. High as heck. That's Ted. He's high, yeah. and it's kind of shamey about it. Yeah. Oh, I thought he just seemed like a friendly dude. No, I mean later. I was like, it, I like, would hang like, out with Ted and buy some weed from Ted. He seems like he knows where the good stuff is. Well, and the totally nondescript cop assumes that Ted is where all the cocaine comes from in California. When we all know it comes from teenagers. Yes. 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 Uh, in high school, specifically yeah. from. Um, I've Sugar blanked sisters. his name out of my mind. Bubba. Oh, Bubba. <laughs> everybody <laughs> loves Bubba, according to Pike. <laughs> according, uh, oh, yes. According to Pike, everybody. Everybody loves Bubba. Yeah. No, but I, <laughs> I'm confident that sentence was 100% sarcastic. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In a, like a, how could you not love it's Bubba? Like, everybody love loves him. Bubba. Bubba's the greatest, <laughs> didn't you know? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I got Fre- I got another character in our Midnight Club for this episode. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it was Bubba. Oh, it was it Bubba. Was Bubba. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just showed up. He just came in with the cocaine. He was like, "Hey guys, yeah. I heard you needed." He brought some cocaine stuff. in. He he <laughs> left it on Ted's desk, and that's why he got fired. Oh my god! Wait, Poor but Ted. our our alumni characters. Well, yes. Let's let's oh, talk about true. the alumni. Who, you know, I, I'm from Illinois. I'm from Chicago. We have the fighting Illini. Okay. Which is, and, you know, I assumed it was because they're illuminated, but they're not the oh. illumin, illumini. They're the alumni. Yeah. I know. I wasn't so quite sure how to say it. In my, in my head, I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm pronouncing this wrong mentally. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one fewer syllable than I thought it should yeah. have. I'm going to be honest, because when I was reading it the first time they mentioned it, I was like, oh, shit, this is a book about the Illuminati. Like, holy crap. Well, like, I, yeah, I read that. Illuminati also. And then obviously. I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> and you're like, oh, like, no. This wait, does it's... not sound like the Illuminati. Oh, no, no it's not. the Illu- No, okay. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, they're, they're sort of characters. I mean, they're they're balls of light and they may be Vincent and Kara and Frederick. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to talk about that in the plot discussion, but that's really it for the Midnight Club. Can you believe it? I know. Super I will, quick. I, 
I just happened to open the book to the page where they're in there and he's about to have his throat business. Um, so yeah. just so we, we can just so we know for the record, he had, however, made a few changes in his appearance. His hair was lighter. He also appeared to be wearing contacts. I could not remember Ray's eyes being green. So apparently right. those were the changes that Frederick made and how he but I mean, they were the, right. he had a cigar also, but they're the same height and build and everything, I think. Yeah. So literally the only changes these people made is changing their hair color and putting contacts in. Uh, the girl had which, an accent, which I mean, <laughs> like what? It, honestly, though, that changes a lot. And if you don't expect someone to look a certain I, like, I mean, it's a plot contrivance and it would never work in a movie. Right. And you can only kind of do, do this kind of thing when you can't see them. But at the same time, like, like, have you ever seen Zooey Deschanel with glasses and bangs and without glasses and that's bangs? That's totally fair. Yeah, yes. that is. Yeah, that's absolutely that's fair. That's true. Yeah. It's like that's a completely a different human. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, you're right. Yeah. I just think it's, it's funny because they're the same age. If they had come back older. No, that's true. Yeah. Then I would have bought it. Like then you could you could buy because then you're you're in you know a movie like Looper where it's right. you know you look like a totally different person but they're coming back as the same age and they're just adopting accents and putting in contacts or you know changing their hair and it's like <laughs> do you, just are you not seeing that it's you <laughs> yeah it's asking us a lot it's asking us yeah. to suspend a lot of disbelief there oh yeah yeah. But, you know, maybe this maybe this next sentence I'm going to read will answer that. This is the first two sentences of the book. It began with a smile, or at least that's what I thought. So that goes to the tooth th uh, obsession. <laughs> but then I didn't think much when I was 18. <laughs> so, you know, if he wasn't thinking much, maybe, uh, you know. And I, I feel like that also vin, uh, vindicates me for my whole teenagers don't there aren't real people thing from a few episodes ago. <laughs> I re I remember uh, when I actually when I read this the other day, I I remember thinking that I liked the beginning of this book. Um, I mean, not that I dislike beginnings of other books, but sometimes the initial description or the initial whatever, and I don't know the. I feel like the first page was so kind of real because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, I wanted to be in love, to have love, you know, uh, I was like everybody else, but I thought I was different and, you know, like, uh, and then the, I'm such a liar. I lie to myself constantly. It's such a good setup for a Pike novel yeah. because you're, you're like, do I like this guy? Do we like this guy? Is he, is he the one we're rooting for or, does, or is he going to do something terrible? Cause you know, it, in that first page, it could go in so many directions. Uh, it's like, did, does he do something terrible for love or is he going to be a good person? And it also gets going very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's just the flab of the final friends books that I'm still getting over, <laughs> but it really moves into the story quickly. And once it gets focused on what it is, it yeah. really doesn't it doesn't meander at all. Nope. Like it's yeah. just one thing after another and then big explanation and then climax, really. Yep. And no side stories. No, no, no side story stories. with the story. <laughs> no I mean nothing. It's just yep. yeah, it's really interesting. But yeah, so we have the the Starlight Crystal video game. Mm -hmm. Uh and the big secret of that is your partner is the bad guy all along. Yep. That's which I I love that um, because the the whole parallel of him trying to figure out Vincent's game mm -hmm. and and him him having that be how to solve his game and you know and Becky constantly pestering him being like have I solved it have I solved it and he's like you've barely even begun and then that's kind of how he is with Vincent's game yeah. and I remember while reading this I'm like oh god I I remember the first time I read this it's like such a simple answer of how to solve the game and then of course but I didn't remember what it was until you know you got to the point where it was that you you don't play <laughs> yeah I I see I knew that immediately yeah Oh, I didn't. And I, I don't know that I knew that immediately because it was obvious to me from this or because that's the solution to war games. Mm. 
the only way to win is not to play. It's not to play. Oh, that's right. So a nuclear war game where your whole idea is what to bomb first, to me, obviously was like, well, if you don't bomb anything, Mm -hmm. you're not starting a war you can't win. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And And I I do want to mention to our listeners, because this might come up again. That we are currently one week into the war between the Ukraine and Russia. And so a lot of the things about nuclear Russia in in this game, in this book, were very uncomfortable to read for me. Very uncomfortable. I While I was reading yeah. it, I was thinking, God, this timing is so bonkers. I, yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, wow. When they kept yeah. mentioning it, I was like, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> Like, yeah. like literally this nuclear war games bore me to tears. There were too many of them on the market. I mean, how many times could you blow up Russia? Yes. I, I, I almost yelled out loud when I got to that part. <laughs> I was like, oh no. And then the next paragraph is he talks about how fast the relationship with Russia is improving mm-hmm. currently in 1990 because yeah. it was. Yeah. But obviously yeah. right now, not so much yeah when we get to the part where we uh we read lines from the book i have <laughs> i have one which, and also may, maybe it's one that you two also picked out mm-hmm. but i was like i'm definitely reading this one on the podcast because it's it feels just very weirdly prescient with what's going on and yeah <laughs> and also it's it's is just a really good line in the book anyway well, yeah that was a little tough mm-hmm so there is this war game, and I mean, what is – okay, so Vincent has literally been alive for less than a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When did he program this ridiculously complex game? <laughs> uh. <laughs> When they were settling those final closing costs on the house that they bought and all those expensive cars, I guess. I mean, yeah, he was doing a lot. Selling those precious jewels. In, let's say, three (laughs) weeks. Because he has to, yeah. Uh, That's a lot. And why buy a house? Why not just, just, you know, rent a place? I know. That's, I was so. uh, Unless you're buying it for Mark. Right. Because then later when. It talks about uh, Mark getting older and becoming rich and successful, uh, to, and he and he buys a house. In my head, I'm like, was that the same house? And that yeah, yeah I, I wondered that too. And it's like, wait, no, time isn't a wheel in this one, no, right? And it I, was, yeah, they mentioned that it's out there, like in in the same area or whatever, don't they? Like, I just assumed it yeah. was. Yeah, it's it seemed that way, and then I was thinking, well, that makes sense because maybe they would have come back and bought it because they. They because would, it was the one that he, yes, and so that maybe like he would somehow like s- sense something in it or feel comfortable in it or whatever or I don't know. But I was tra- <laughs> probably trying to make I was probably trying to make <laughs> too much of a a reason for what was going on. Well, honestly, no, I think that that's that's what I was doing in this book as well. Is because as I'm as I was reading it, I was on board with as wacky as it got. But upon reflection, <laughs> it's like, wait, you glossed over a shitload of stuff here. Yes. <laughs> and so much the, stuff. the answers you did give me don't make sense. Yeah. No, nothing makes sense. And the, and the more I think about it, the more I wonder if, is that the point? Like, like the title mm. is See You Later, you know, to, and um, like, what do, what do you guys think? Who do you guys think the... Alum- well, let me alum- let me alum- let me yeah. break down for anyone who didn't read it because we yes. do get people like that. Let's see if I can break down the plot. Um, Mark is in love with Becky, who's dating Ray. Mark is just being one of those guys who just keeps coming into the store, and maybe one day Becky will not be dating Ray. <laughs> Mark meets Vincent and Kara, rich people who both have Lamborghinis um, and he is also a computer programmer and they, and Kara immediately gets to work trying to break up Becky and Ray 
some Mark and date Becky. She does that by going out with Ray. So Mark gets to go out with Becky, but then finds out that she broke him up. And that's really the whole plot, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. So then we find out the overarching plot. Okay, yeah, yeah. Is nuclear war. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Becky, Ray, Becky and Ray grow up to be on a outpost uh, space station that survives the nuclear war only to almost be dying. And then the uh, alumni come to their rescue, which are balls of light, which also show up in Vincent's video game. Mm Mm-hmm. And transport them somehow back to the present as young people again, but somewhat different. So they can somehow avert nuclear war. And for Kara slash Becky, her way of averting nuclear war (laughs) <laughs> is to get Becky and Mark together. Yeah. That's and also the- Vincent is possibly the thought out version <laughs> of Mark who died. <laughs> the thought out version. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I that, think I think yeah. that's it, right? Yeah. That 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 pretty much covers it, and then well, then the aliens, well, right? <laughs> right. The aliens, and, uh, aka future peoples. Okay, um, yeah. So then, then we get the the question of is Kara, Frederick, and Vincent actually versions of themselves from the future? Mm-hmm. Or, or are they are they dead? <laughs> Are they dying? Like, specifically, are they dying on the space shuttle and somehow went back in time? Right. Or are they the alumni slash angels? Mm -hmm. Because the book tries to give us all of these answers. Yes. Like, I mean, you know, when Kara's explaining stuff um, and... Uh, Mark's not buying it and because also you're like this does sound weird because when he's like so they they have a gender but they don't have bodies but they have this and they don't have that and you're like yeah that's weird like how does she know (laughs) it's a girl but it's like a ball of light but what Um, and also and and he never freezes himself (laughs) yeah even in the in the flashback version of the story when he goes inside vincent he doesn't freeze himself he just sets his book on fire and dies out in the wilderness Mm -hmm. that's right yeah because so so i think what i don't think it's really i don't think that was really him like i think or maybe if it was i think they were just brought back like so what i think happened is that they were on the ship dying and Uh uh-huh i don't know how Or why? Because they don't explain that. And I'm not, look, I don't question divine beings, but I think (laughs) that there, there was something. That's a good place to to draw the line, Cassie, (laughs) by the way. There's questioning divine beings. Yeah. Like they, they've got their reasons. That's what I'll trust. Um, But like, so I feel like their souls were what the things were at because they don't have their need for their body anymore. So it's like their future souls. And I think somehow it was like the, like humanity's way because they were like okay these are the last hundred people they've already like fucked everything up for everybody else if we're going to help Mm -hmm. us save ourselves we have to do it with these hundred people so the souls of those hundred people came back and was like obviously like if all like something could have gone wrong but if there's a way to fix it like all of you can go back and try to do that so they like Mm -hmm. each one paired with itself and was like what do you need? Like, what do you want to go back and do? Like, what do you think will change things? And they, they let each one of them decide. And because it was themselves, 
they were okay with whatever it was. And that's why hers was like, when she's like, oh, I'm going to go back and fuck up my boyfriend and get my new boyfriend, you know, like that. <laughs> they were like, okay, cool. And when the other guy was probably thinking like, I'm going to go back and start the war first. They were like, okay, cool. Like strength, you know, like whatever. Like they were... <laughs> They were letting yeah, them do whatever like they, they wanted. They could have wiped that problem out. They could have, yeah. And like, so, but they were like, I think it was an important thing to like let them choose to do their own thing. But I think there was also like a certain amount of help too, because like there was a lot of stuff that the guy had that he didn't have before. And then, like, for example, with the girl, she seemed to know that the guy was dead and that he couldn't have been frozen and that that was all fucking bullshit. But her mm -hmm. like angel future self made it happen and helped bring him back so that she wasn't alone so she could go back and do what she had to do. I think it was just like, I don't they think They also did truly... bring them to the Garden of Eden LA yeah. version. Yeah, they had right. flower smelling leaves. How cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would carry leaves Which is where everywhere. the Vincent name came from because it apparently looked like a Van Gogh painting. Right. There's a lot there. Yeah, there's, it's, it is like, I'm, I'm, because uh, I, I had messaged uh, Cooper earlier, Cassie, and, um, he said he was just finishing the book and I was saying how I d had forgotten how messy everything is at the <laughs> end that yeah. it's just like, it's just like straight on mess. It's like, is it this or is it that? Is it this or is it that? And then it's like, oh, we're, and now we're like killing our future selves or killing our past selves. And what does that mean? And what is with this causality and, and who, who dies or who disappears? <laughs> yeah. And like <laughs> nobody's theory Dear makes God, me when sense. When they introduce causality into it. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, we, you know, time travel stories are tough anyway. Yes. Yeah. But when you start going down the I killed my grandma rabbit hole of causality, <laughs> that's a nightmare. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's a reason why it didn't impact Vincent, too, because even when she told Mark, Vincent was still like unchanged. Although I feel like her having told him in the past would have changed things, but that also solidified to me that they were separate like and that's why they didn't explain everything fully to becky and they didn't explain everything fully to ray because mm -hmm. both of those people were the same as her like they actually did come back whereas um mark never made it to the spaceship he never oh he yeah legit that's died. True. right and and then at right. the end when he does die at like around the same age in the same way like coming out of that thing like yeah. I feel like that was always his path. The Mark, like the Vincent that came back. I don't think that was really Mark. I think it was modeled after Mark, and it was something mm. just for her. Well, that could be, you know, if yeah, we maybe. if we postulate super intelligent divine beings, you know, there's yeah. really nothing they can't do there. Also, maybe that that is the point too of of Vincent wanting Mark to help him was almost to say like everything is inevitable like all of it like no mm. matter what everything's inevitable and war isn't more war isn't going to solve this no war solves this but it still doesn't change the fact that he dies right yeah. when it does it does raise the interesting question that you know i've i <laughs> futurama has struggled with this a lot when they do time travel is the idea of, uh, of multi dimensions instead of multiple times. Because if you go back in time, there are really two things you have, two options you have is that the you from today is eventually going to be the person who went back in time, or the moment you go back in time, you create a diverging timeline. Right. Yes. So nothing that you do in the past can actually change your future it mm -hmm. can only change the the future of that person in the past right oh my head <laughs> <laughs> it's too much it's too timey wimey i can't do it i know i know it's it's tough i now need to rewatch uh back to the future part two where Doc oh Rax yeah well, there are two of me here it. and there are yes. two of you <laughs> yeah you marty you must not run into your other self <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then there's the great line from Futurama. Oh, a lesson on changing history from Mr. I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> a killer line. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know where I come down on this. I mean, like, it's yeah. it seemed like when she was explaining it, that was a perfectly fine explanation. Yeah. Only to have the epilogue be Mark rethinking her explanation multiple times. 
and not giving us a satisfactory answer. Not even just rethinking it, but straight up saying, like, she misremembered and misknew everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yes. just blatantly, like, calling her out. Everything she it's... said was wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mark what? seems pretty confused, too, at the end, which I think would make sense. Like, you're just like, oh, what the fuck just oh, happened totally. in my life? Yeah. Like, how bananas was that? Right. And then also, I know he says that he, you know, has enough money to do the heart surgery or whatever, but he he's scared. Which of chooses dying. not to. Uh, yeah, because he's scared of dying on the table. And that I part of me thinks that it's actually even though, you know, we never find out. Um, it makes me think that it's not that he's scared of dying on the table. It's because he knows what the future is now. And he's like, why? Why be alive for it? Oh, well, now that's that's a dark thought. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he even says, like, once you meet, like, the one or whatever and you lose her, like, mm -hmm. and I guess there's no other fish in the sea beside good old <laughs> Becky. Well, and that know. really does solidify his uh, broken man who will never love again. Yes. It's just it, he's totally that. He's yes. like, oh, but I cannot go on. Oh, pathos. <laughs> and we we all know how he'd answer the would you kill baby Hitler question because he wouldn't let Frederick or Frederick Ray yeah, yeah. die. So and I was like, man, you're gonna let this guy live. He's gonna blow us up sooner. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's his whole point. Like he just said he's gonna blow us up sooner. But I think that was <laughs> yeah. it. And it's an important thing too, where they're like friends by the end of it, where they've like become buddies. And like he even says with his like Frederick self, he's like, Yeah, we could have been friends. I feel like maybe like he doesn't ever see him again or anything, but I feel like that whole experience and everything and seeing his like girlfriend die and stuff like and just how uncertain Ray was after because he's like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like this stuff doesn't make sense. I know that girl existed. Like where what? Right. Yeah. I feel like that probably changes him a bit because if you're so cocky and sure of yourself and then this weird otherworldly shit happens to you and everybody's telling you that something doesn't exist that you think exists, you can't be as sure of yourself after that, I feel like. So maybe That's that true. is what he needed to not. I don't know. I expected maybe they would like be like, and then he became president and was the most like benevolent president that ever lived or something like that. I but know, there's, right? There's nothing like that. There's no like full come around for him at nope. all. I know. I was, no. it made me think. I just want to um, believe he changed. Did, uh, did you read um, Madeline Langle's books like A Wrinkle in Time and oh yeah, uh, and all those? So I my favorite one is A Swiftly Tilting Planet where they stop nuclear war from happening because they go back in time and they find they call it the. Um, they call it the might have been and they have hmm. to stop the quote unquote might have been from happening because that's the bloodline that continues on to grow up to become a dictator who wants to blow up the world. And hmm. they, they of course, like Meg and Charles Wallace successfully stop it. And then when they're back in, in present day, they're the only ones that know what's happened and and know that everyone went to bed the night before afraid of nuclear winter. And in the morning, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Like, everything's great and prosperous. And like, we have great relations with everyone in every other country. And, and, and Meg is like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you do have to kill baby Hitler. <laughs> sometimes you do have to kill baby Hitler. I mean, let's, let's be pragmatic here for a moment. <laughs> but Mark would not have done it. No, Mark would not have done it because the only way to win is not to play. That's right. But that doesn't count for everything, Mark. <laughs> that only counts for thermonuclear war. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> yeah. the only win to the only way to win is to shoot your best friend. Yeah. Who's your co pilot. Ah, uh -huh. that's yeah. right. So it just depends on the situation, really, which way you're gonna go with it. You've got a decision <laughs> to make. <laughs> yeah. And and how are you gonna play this? And he, <laughs> he made his decision to die at 29. Yes, yep. he did. Yep. Which which really is a a frustrating ending. Yeah. I know. It's yeah, it's I think also I wonder too if it was like partially a commentary of you know, you have all this information and you know all this stuff and you know, you know what you could do or what could happen and it you still even when given the chance you'll still live your life the same way without yeah. the knowledge that that you did without the knowledge all because a high school girl ditched you yes 
how it just makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the verge of nuclear war right now. Yeah. Good times for all of it us, right? It makes me angry. You know what makes me angry is I can't imagine a group of adults sitting around and craving ice cream so many times and going out for it so many times that they have to have the conversation of like, where do you want to get ice cream tonight? No, How are there totally. this many places to even get ice cream <laughs> totally. around you? There is what so the much hell? ice cream in this book that I see then it was when weird. they were going out to ice cream multiple times. I thought, well, I guess they only eat ice cream. So what kind of a monster does that make them? Cause <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. think lizards would like ice cream. No, but vampires might because it's cold. That's true. Oh, but I the, have no the- idea. The lizards in Scavenger Hunt love ice cream. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, so the... the... Damn it. We're immediately thwarted. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cooper's well, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just really funny because uh, before when we were talking about how we don't remember names from books, you know, once, we, once you know, we we have... I love that that's what you remember from Scavenger Hunt. <laughs> well... I remember because there's the part with Ceci and Davy who were the lizards. And oh, Ceci! Pre- I loved yes. her. Yeah. Yes. Ceci and Davy. They the, the they lizard, pretend... the lizard brother and sister, who yes. were weirdly yes. incestuous, right? They yes. were. They, they were a little weird. They, yeah. yeah. Yes, they pretend to be brother and sister at the high school. Oh yeah, right. And then, they weren't actually brother and sister. Yes, and then that girl Tracy goes to get ice cream and sees them making out, and she's like, "What is going yeah. on?" Yeah. And then she okay. comes back. Ew. <laughs> And everyone's like, what's wrong with you? And she's like, nothing, nothing. Everything's fine. Why? Why? What's wrong? <laughs> she's like, I, she's like, I just saw like incest happening, but I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, first of all, look, it, ice cream is, look, I'll eat ice cream. Okay. So I'm just going to start and say that I will eat ice cream <laughs> and I like ice cream, but don't ever stick your tongue in my fucking mouth. If you've eaten ice cream. Also that he talks about her, her chocolatey sweet breath after she's eaten ice cream. No, that is rancid old milk stank. That is disgusting. It's chocolate wow. milk stank on her tongue right now, and you're sniffing it, and it's gross. I'm not here for that. I didn't know the, the milk oh, thing translated anything to... dairy for me, honestly, especially if it's white and dairy, like yogurt or sour cream. Ugh, 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 ugh. Nope. <laughs> absolutely not. It doesn't smell good. It's 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 dairy, and it smells bad. And then when you... if it Like, if it's cold, whatever. It smells like ice cream. But it's been in her mouth. She's She's oh. been eating it with her spit, and now she's letting her... The smell of I can't, dude. There was parts in this book where I was like, "Why ice cream? Why milk? Why everything in these books? Go back to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger." Like I was, I was fine with the bloody meat talk in Monster, and like totally fine with her eating those raw burgers. But then we go to these books with the ice cream and the milk, and I cannot hang because it's so gross to me. <laughs> I cannot hang. And then, and then you mentioned in the scavenger hunt when one when they're like kissing after the I, no, don't yeah. do that. Go brush your teeth. Yeah. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> God, Cassie, you know. I have strong <laughs> feelings about dairy. Also, you should <laughs> never share it too. Like, if one person's licking an ice cream cone, you better not put your tongue near my ice cream. Like, that is just if you want to taste it, you better use the other side that I have not already licked because my own licking will gross me out for if somebody else is ingesting it. And then you need to use a spoon and only take a little bit so you don't make it lopsided because I want it to be, you know. Anyways, I'm very particular about. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> And, and I have mess. no idea why this is what's come to mind, but it's it's uh, Louise <laughs> complaining about Tina's bad breath and Tina saying, not if you like fish. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. I, I can't with them. Yuck. They're just <laughs> gross. <laughs> it's probably because all those little cat treats they're eating. Like, Yeah, that's true. They do, uh, they do eat cat food. <laughs> Yuck. There was another thing I was going to say about this book, and I can't even remember what it is. Well, because you've got, got all so, worked up uh, on the I, ice cream. About dairy, I know, I know. So I just, <laughs> I'll try to remember it in the meantime. I really did like the idea that when they got too close to each other, their uh, mind melt started melted. overlapping. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that yes. was cool. That was really cool. I thought they and were when they, in love. when they first did that with the two moons. It's like, oh, there's another moon. It's going to be on the other side of Earth, and we've never seen it. And then it's going to have the you know lizard people on it. That's what I thought. I was I like, was oh my really God. I was really sold like... on the lizard people. Yeah. In this book. I'm... 
I was I was very well, much, and then I'm like, oh no, it was just two moons because it's their two ma. Mi- oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought Mark was going to oh. discover that he was bisexual because his heart kind of like leapt when he like got a little bit too close yeah. to the guy vampire, and I was like, whoa, is there gonna are they gonna get like explore a little something here? But then it it they didn't explore that. It was I something else. I did wonder that myself, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It, know, it, I, and, it, but it in 1990. Oh yeah, right. Nineteen ninety. That's, That's why yeah. I was like, "Oh, really? Are they going to do this?" Yeah, yeah. they did. You know what? Though, even in nineteen ninety, they might have done it with two girls, maybe. Oh yeah, I think they they, I and that's really the only kind of uh, bisexuality we've ever had hinted at in Pike's world is two girls. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and even then, I may have just been reading into it. Yeah. It's just wishful but, thinking because we're like, they would be so cute. They look like like they're such good girlfriends. Like, come I on. I know, right? <laughs> look at these no, gal but pals. I fully believe in sugar sister orgies. <laughs> they're just roommates. Yeah, they're just, just roommates. roommates. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I did remember, I remembered what the thing was. So how we were talking about how Pike made him similar to the Master of Murder character. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't fucking get through the book, though, because at the very end, he's like, I'm going to write this book. <laughs> <laughs> the main character like finishes with his like dying heartbeats like yeah. finishes penning his book because he just couldn't like it, it could, couldn't it have been a video game couldn't you have told the story through a video game and that would have made it more I relevant know. like Pike couldn't let it go no, in, like, instead no. he literally writes the book we're reading yeah yeah <laughs> yes. which is probably the most obnoxious first person character thing it's such a Pike <laughs> thing though so I, I love it when it's it in really Pike is. books because I'm just like here yeah. it is like this is what I this is what I come here for Yep. This and McDonald's, not the ice cream. This... <laughs> <laughs> and ca- and cautionary care. Listens... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Pike's because... listening, he's just like, what does this girl have against dairy, dude? Like, I was not thinking anything about this. I, I Kids like ice cream, so I put fucking ice cream in the book. What's the problem? And no, I'm I feel like, like if he ever in. does come on the show, he's going to just be talking to you explicitly about... <laughs> Dairy and milk dairy. usage in the books. Like, you know, if you had a, gl- a good glass of milk right now, Cassie, I'm like, no, no, I'm no. going to stop you right there. He's going to try to, try to like exposure therapy you out. Of it. And be like, I'm listen, hear him sniffing. I can just see him being like, listen, Cassie, they're in high school. They can't go to bars. They go out for ice cream. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but they but do drink an awful lot of beer. Let's they be do. honest. It's like he picks and it, like he picks and chooses. Like this guy just graduated from high school. He can That's go true. at least have a Coke. Like he can yeah. have a soda. Like if they can have <laughs> cocaine brownies sold at a bake sale in high school, I expect these grown adults to be eating something other than ice cream for their meal. Excuse yeah. me. And my weird like aversion to dairy <laughs> this is very important to you <laughs> it is it's just i think it's so bizarre because it comes up so much and i didn't remember it but now as an adult and i've always had this weird aversion but like as a kid i must have just i was so excited about the stories that i just blanked it out and then now i'm i can't I, I, all i see is just the milk dripping down their lips and, oh gross oh, dear god <laughs> now i'm grossed out <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm, uh, all right, wow. that's it. I'm off ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream forever. For Did you no, just talk you out of liking ice cream? Maybe just for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, I just look. It's fine if you eat it by yourself. Just eat, I, the the thing that's bizarre to me too is if I eat my own ice cream, if I eat my own ice cream. Not like I make it, but like if I, if I myself as a person am eating ice cream, you have first of all your mouth gets cold and you can mm. smell it. It's dairy. It's it's milky like. It, it, there's a film to milk also when you eat it like it just makes your mouth get milk mouth and then you just that happens with ice cream i can't be the only neither one of you no i'm just gonna let now. you keep talking about this <laughs> well, it's it's you know what it, it, what you're reminding me of is is that uh that thing that happens to when you when you eat tums and yeah, okay like the the calcium in tums gives you that sort of like weird coated tongue thing yes. that makes your like your breath weird and like your mouth yeah. tastes bad and so that's that's sort of what I'm picturing as you as you talk about this. <laughs> that's it. Honestly, Tums it has a similar thing. I think the reason Tums are less because they're dry, so they're not wet. Yeah. If they were if Tums were moist and like no, I don't <laughs> think I could have moist. them. 
if Tums were a liquid, I could, and I know that there's like Maalox I mean, and the, stuff the, like that. Honestly, like, the words "if Tums were moist," I don't think have ever been spoken. I just, no. it sounds awful. No, in the history of the world, but because that they're dry, like you can chew them yeah. up. Like I pretend they're, you know, those little Smarties that you can pop out of the little thing, and you're just like pop, <laughs> pop them in your mouth. I pretend yeah. they're Smarties when I have to eat Tums, and I'm like, mm, but it doesn't taste as good. But if you pretend, <laughs> they're also larger, but they're colorful, so they're still cute. <laughs> I've got a lot of opinions on Tums as well, I guess. Yeah, I Anyways. A surprising amount of opinions. What section are we in of this episode? Mm-hmm. Right let's now? let's do this. Let's take a commercial break. <laughs> and uh we'll bring brought to you by Tums and Ice Cream. Oh god. And, and we'll be back with more of the podcast. <laughs> Friends, where else can you get this kind of programming than the Pikecast? Nowhere, that's where. But we're trying to keep the lights on here. If you like what you're hearing and want it to keep happening, jump over to our Patreon at thepikecast.com slash Patreon and throw us a few bucks to join our private Discord server. Higher tiers get books, stickers, bookmarks, and even personalized shirts. That's thepikecast.com slash Patreon. Once, Osgood and Frost were the up-and-coming stars of the burgeoning paranormal investigation TV show craze before a hoax put an end to their friendship, partnership, and television careers. Now, over a decade later, Prudence Osgood is a barely functioning alcoholic ghost hunter for hire. Her yearning for mystery and adventure is reignited when she receives a cryptic, untraceable email. She can't resist embarking on an investigation that tugs threads, winding through a sinister series of disappearances, her former partner's family, and a night 20 years ago when a semi blew a yellow light and nearly killed her. Reviewers are calling Osgood as Gone a masterfully vulnerable and relatable 21st century horror story and a bourbon-soaked supernatural mystery with sparkling dialogue that sticks the landing on LGBT characters and main character Prudence Osgood, as tortured as she is clever, broken in all the best ways, and a true heroine for our times. Buy it today at As Good As Gone as a paperback, ebook, or audiobook narrated by me, J.J. Ronvier. Welcome back to the Pikecast. Now is the point where we'd move on to the eternal enemy. I don't know that there is one. Mm. Except war. for war. War. It never changes. Yeah. No. War. That That's from Fallout, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> you would pick up on it so i was just gonna let it go like, okay, I, know that. I know that how do i know i was like at least one of our listeners will know what that's from it's fine <laughs> so yeah war or surprisingly russia and china even though they're but, not yeah, the they seem to not like china book. as well in the book yeah yeah but there, China was the uh, the scapegoat where it's like, okay, well, we're not going to deal with Russia anymore. Who who do we want to position as the big bad? Mm-hmm. And this is before they were positioning um, the Arab countries as the big bad. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought it was interesting the talk about how, like, what would happen. Like, I don't know if obviously if that stuff would really happen with, like, the the – dust and stuff like that but i thought that was interesting Mm because they kept bringing it back and saying i was like like how they were like oh what happened to australia and he's like no that's just a casualty because of everything else going on like they're not going to survive this like yeah just because it's not the person you hit doesn't mean they're not also damaged and i thought that was like a really impactful that's the that's the the terrifying question of of all of it is is there a way to survive nuclear war even if you're not, yeah. you know, even if nuclear wars extend, mm-hmm. is Russia launches a nuke at the Ukraine. Right. Because somebody else is going to fire a nuke at Russia. Yeah. And then, you know, and that really, that's, that's it. That's why the only way to win is not to play. Yeah. That's, and it's, 
but like the <laughs> well, I mean, and Australia then Huffington, wasn't playing. Well, no, but Australia is already on fire. That's you know, right. yeah. Really, it does not take much to make Australia uninhabitable. It's those kangaroos and spiders. Yeah, <laughs> those spiders are and, so and, scary and heat. You know, but but also kangaroos and spiders. <laughs> Do you know that they have kangaroo burgers there? Just like they sell it in the stores, like beef and oh, that's ham. not surprising. Yeah, I was yeah. watching because I watch a lot of YouTube's of cooking videos and stuff. And one of these girls was like, "And then for lunch, you can make the same thing as me and just go get a kangaroo burger." And I was like, "What? <laughs> just the heck? just go out and get one." Yeah, and then she oh. even she goes, "Oh wait, I guess if you don't live here, you might not have access. You could just have like a turkey burger or something." I was like, "What the <laughs> heck? That's so cool! Wow, yeah. wild." Anyway, sorry, that was a small thing. <laughs> I know that I you learn something new every day. I had no idea yes. about kangaroo burgers. So yeah, that, they're just in the frozen my... like yeah meat section. Just I I don't know. They I don't know huh. how that works. And you keep a kangaroo in the back or something. I don't know. Oh my god! <laughs> you might want to cut that. That was a the... joke. I just meant it as a joke, but it might have been too gross. I was going to say, does it is it like the lobster tank where you go out and pick your kangaroo? <laughs> Oh my god. All the no, vegetarians I'm... are so angry at me. I'm sorry. I was just it was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really worried about the kangaroos now. <laughs> no, no. Have you seen those things punch and kick? Like they are powerful. I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't be worried about scary. the kangaroos. They yeah, yeah they're I huge would, I, too. Yes. People who well, mess let's, with them let's move back to, to, to the, the oh, book right. at hand. There's here. no kangaroos in this. <laughs> no kangaroos in this book. <laughs> None. I mean, they're they're all dead because Australia is dead. Well, yeah, they're all yes. dead. So yeah. it was slightly related, just to be clear. Yeah. But let's move into thirst, which, as we already mentioned, there's not a lot. No. Nope. But I have three sorta quotes. Okay. Cooper's like, sorta. there's not a lot, but I'm gonna find what's there. No, I, I had to. <laughs> I had to jam some stuff into this category. Um. Um, we're, we're, <laughs> yes, I understand what I said, Cassie. <laughs> Where Kara goes into the bookstore and says, I'm looking for something inspirational. And Ray points over his shoulder. Mm. Our sex manuals are in uh. the back. Yes. Yep. I'm pretty sure this and, is the scene where Ray's description is introduced, and I love that you <laughs> highlighted something from this scene, and you're just like, I don't I fucking know what it is. Like. I don't give a I fuck don't... about Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I knew from the beginning I wouldn't care about him. That's fair. <laughs> Instead, we have Kara moistening her lips, saying, I already own enough of those. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> One thing that I forgot to mention before is, can we talk about how, I mean, it's, it's not even a, a full discussion, but can we just mention <laughs> that, <laughs> that it's, it's weird, all these people not liking their first name and going by their middle names <laughs> or like. Yeah, that, that is also weird. Yes. And also Cara Becky is a terrible name. Cara Becky to makes no, I mean, Cara Rebecca, I guess makes mo a little more sense, but Cara Becky is, that's What? Kara Becky? That is you, a weird you name. Your kid Kara Becky? At least like Frederick Ray sounds better. <laughs> Four times you say it, it sounds like an island somewhere, like a travel destination. Like, oh, I'm going to the tropical island of Kara Becky. Kara Becky. <laughs> Kara Becky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I don't no, know. No, you're, you're right. That is that is a bizarre name. It is. Yeah. I don't. I never even. I didn't even reading it. I didn't say it together once or put it together. But and, now that you mention it, it's terrible. And it's the terrible. fact that that Becky shares her first name by whispering it to. Uh, I forgot our white Mark. Bread, Mark, Mark. While he's <laughs> asleep. That's so Casper though. That was like a, a cute little Casper moment. I think they were having. She probably saw Casper, and she was like, "Oh, this is good. I know exactly when to tell him my name." Like it was like, "Can I keep you?" But she's like, "Cara Becky, Cara Becky. <laughs> my name's Cara Becky." <laughs> I pictured it. It's, it's it tickled me too much. <laughs> now just think oh, of how oh. differently this book would have gone if she'd been awake. Ah. Uh. It's like, wait, your name's Kara? Hold That's true. on. Oh Hold my on. God. I just Actually, that met might have been Kara. cool. He could if have only... a, uh, like a like a Kaiser Sose moment. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Damn That's him well... for being such a heavy sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> you and your your damn heart condition making you sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. How dare you be tired in bed with a girl? <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Okay, well, back to thirst. 
Mm-hmm. I've got another reference to the sex manuals. Okay. Uh, at least if you go to a drive-in, you'll be comfortable. She oh. smiled faintly. I could bring one of my sex manuals. <laughs> and then shame. I had to chuckle. Really, Kara? That was crude. <laughs> oh, my God. Mark was such a square. Yeah. He really he's was. such yeah. oatmeal. He's a big old bowl of plain oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Made in the microwave, not on the stove either. Yeah, plain, oh, yeah. Snow, yeah. plain. Uh, microwave, not not yeah. not one of the flavored ones. There's Only no apple water. cinnamon in there. Yeah. No yeah. milk inside it either. No. Just water. Yeah. No raisins. No cinnamon. No, nope, nothing. No. no funny little eggs that turn into dinosaurs when you heat them up. <laughs> I used to love those. That's the good oatmeal. What Cooper? <laughs> what the heck? Why did you get so quiet? That's the good good oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be after my my. Um, uh, they still sell that. You can go to Walmart right now and find. No, no, a I'm, good I'm not saying that it it's <laughs> not currently available. I'm saying that my time where I would buy oatmeal, where where something like that happens, has passed. <laughs> really? I don't hey, want to ever. I Lucky Charms. I'm I'm still a big <laughs> kid. No, I'm going to stop you right there. You cannot compare dinosaur oatmeal to Lucky Charms because you don't even have any magic happening with the Lucky Charms. They're already <laughs> magical. They were made magical. The dinosaur eggs become magical because they turn into dinosaurs. That's like science. <laughs> You're having science for breakfast, my friend, and you cannot beat that. Any age, it's good. I really think you should get a box. I'm going to send you a box. Hey, I think we're having science for breakfast is the subtitle for this episode. <laughs> it's good with science. <laughs> oh I have one more thirst quote. Okay. <laughs> You're going out with a woman. You've got to look sexy. <laughs> it's almost eight, I said. I don't have time to stop at a plastic surgeon on the way. <laughs> yeah. Is that There's a thirst self- Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I do Tara, like that quote, though. Self- Tara very- says, you're sexy, Mark. If it wasn't for Vincent, I would have seduced you weeks ago. I mean, to be fair, even seducing Vincent, she's seducing him, according to her. So that doesn't That's make true. any sense. She's lying. Right. Yeah. Cause Liar! Like Vincent, Vincent's basically like a vampire and dead anyway. So Yeah, that's he true. Is Vincent undead. is. He is a vampire. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, he is. He just is. He is. I feel Damon. like there's more there. <laughs> there's more. There's got to be more I think they just left there. some part. They forgot. Like, he was like, there was this whole vampire thread I was going to explore. But, like, <laughs> I forgot about it because it was so timey-wimey. I got thrown off. And then by the time I had to turn it in, it was too late to add the vampires. And I figured it was fine anyway. That I feel like if that part was in there, that thread, the end would make perfect sense if we knew there were blood-sucking vampires involved at some point somehow. Yes. <laughs> because if he Maybe didn't they fly the himself, spaceships. how is he alive? <laughs> yeah i love how they're just like well they put them up there because it was cold like you could have a place that keeps things cold down here like like, what (laughs) how bizarre that they're above the arctic circle yeah that i i remember reading that part and being like did i buy this as a kid when i read this because this (laughs) this is very 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 dubious science here (laughs) (laughs) Especially now, as the Arctic Circle is melting, so <laughs> yes, that too. Uh, the world is awful. Oh yes. Oh, I thought you were going to sing. I thought you were going to sing a song. Oh, you thought I was going <laughs> to sing a song? Yeah, because you were like, "The world is," and I, th- I thought it was going to go in a different direction because you did such like a deep voice. And I was like, I was like about to snap my fingers to it. I was like, yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was just a dramatic sigh. <laughs> Actually, you know what you should have sang? The lyric that we, we, we missed the moment, but the lyric was, the world is a vampire. Yeah. Oh, See? yeah. That's what, yeah. yeah. And it would have matched our uh, our whole story. Listeners, just yeah. pretend I did that. Yeah. That, that, that's actually what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Don't rewind it to listen because it, it's not <laughs> Just listen there, to us now, what we're saying. It happened in the timey-wimey time loop of causality. <laughs> But if you go back and listen to it, it's gone. It's like Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> okay, let's move into Die Softly, where we talk moralizing and problematic elements. Um, I mean, I didn't find anything terribly problematic. Um, it's true. Yeah, out of out of all of them, 
you know, they're really, except for the thing we already talked about, which it was, you know, pretty normal for the time period as a guy mm-hmm. continuing to ask out a girl who's not interested in him. And the only real moralizing was that little bit about uh, sex books being, you know, and then later uh, M- Mark does say he should have uh Kara shot. Yes. Which just felt like an extreme reaction. Yes. You'd have her shot for what? Yeah. For setting him up on a date. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Okay. It feels like an extreme joke. Yeah. But, you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we move into the season of passage and let's lead with pikeisms. Okay. And we've got two McDonald's quotes. (laughs) <laughs> we got we could go to mcdonald's together is six good for you because you know ideal time and then because i was driving a ferrari i told her we couldn't very well go to mcdonald's that that's such a weird thing too like he's so like what is that i'm sure there are people with fancy cars who go to mcdonald's my dude like it's a drive through that's what yeah, you do totally. drive through and especially late at night yeah right. He was, that was, he was really like, and she, so sorry for the problematic. That was another thing I forgot too, that she was very concerned with what he dressed like. Like she was like, well, maybe I would have looked at you if you were wearing different clothes. Like, uh, so it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you were dating a different dude. Like it's just, maybe if you were a better person, I would have looked at you. Like, yeah, it was weird and superficial. Yes. That was extremely superficial. It was like, you, you became close to this person. You bonded and became friendly. What should it matter how he dressed and and it made me think how when I was 17 or 18 I remember liking a guy and he dressed like shit and I did not care <laughs> because yeah like, he's really cute and I have a crush on him and honestly if he's going to wear the same Metallica t-shirt every third day I mean what am I gonna do about it like, she's like I guess I like Metallica now where's my Metallica t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, drunk parents on the bingo card this week. Um, Ah. He no longer lived at home. I decided to leave after my dad hit me over the head with a gallon vodka bottle minutes after he drained the contents. Mm -hmm. That's extreme. He he, he loves terrible parents. He loves like absent parents and terrible parents. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the parents are either non-existent or they're bad people. Very rarely are they decent. You're right. Yeah. He mentions too how he has to have like <clears throat> stitches or whatever surgery or something on his head, and there's like the hair grew over the scar. And when you were mentioning the dark half thing, I like thought back to that and the scar. And I was like, oh man, he really could have gone in another direction with this. He, he really could have. It almost, I mean, there's so much going on in this book. You almost think that maybe he he wanted nothing to. like a teratoma to make you ex- yeah. extra excited. <laughs> Oh, and gosh. and for those of you playing the home game, just Google Teratoma. See what happens. <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> or or don't. <laughs> Let me warn you. You may not want to see what happens. <laughs> uh, there is another indictment of the insurance uh, industry. Since I'd left home, I had only myself to rely on. I had no medical insurance. Because, you know, jobs still... Uh, were the medical insurance. Of course. And he's just because... being a genius creating computer games and they're just paying him money. Yeah, but he said he was down to like the, his last five dollars. So he he wasn't he wasn't really uh in a I can afford insurance way. Oh at that right. Point. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was sorry, he was rich later when he was older. Yeah, later. He was um, spending all his money on I assume TV, he yeah. had insurance later. Yeah. Or or at least could afford to pay for shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he says once he makes the video games that Vincent shows him and he makes it like he says he waits a few years until like the next gen systems or whatever can like. Yeah, yeah. he has to wait for right. the RAM to catch up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and then the most recent weird Pike quirk is a weird way of explaining the Beatles. Oh, <laughs> a girl came into the store right then and needed Becky's help finding a record by a group she'd just heard of. They were called the Beatles. <laughs> like, that's too clever by half, Pike. Yeah. 
Any anyone notice any other Pike isms that I missed? Um, I don't think so. I no, mean, well, I, I know you were raring to get to a quote. Does oh. it fall under best, worst, or weird? Um, I or think... just interesting? Because there's that Let's too. See. Well, I have one that's interesting. Although it also could be kind of a Pikeism because when I read it, I'm like, this reminds me of another. Uh, more than actually maybe a couple of pike books just the way he has characters describe the unknown um Mm -hmm. there's a part where i think this is this is right after uh cara accidentally runs over becky trying to to turn over ray and um (laughs) And which sounds so weird when you say that. <laughs> it's accurate though. <laughs> yeah, it is it is accurate. And um and he's he's trying to save Kara and he remembers uh something she said about the the time machine and it was we never actually saw it before we left, although we felt it at work. I suppose it could be there even now. The inside of the cave does have a timeless quality about it. And it just reminded me mm. of other caves and other stories yeah. and and the feel like although i guess i mean in something like scavenger hunt when they go to that cave i remember they all feel evil in it they yeah. all know something evil so i guess it's a different feeling but um i just something about it like sparked in my head because i was like i feel like every time they go into a, a strange location in a pike book like they they get this sense of either mystical wonder or oh my god some like an an unspeakable (laughs) horror happened on these grounds (laughs) that does seem to happen a lot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and then the other one uh i think that one the other one i think falls under best It says, I have to pause here to say something about the political climate of the day. In a sense, it was better than what we have in our present society. Russia was an ally of the United States. China was the only major communist country left. There were far fewer missiles. Today, the overkill on both sides is what? Tenfold? It's at least that. In this story, the overkill was down to perhaps two times. Disarmament programs had succeeded in shrinking the stockpiles for 30 years. It gave the world a false sense of security. As a wise man once pointed out, you only need one bullet to blow someone's brains out. So we could only blow each other up once. We would still be dead. Yeah. It's great timing. I I, re- I honestly had chills I, reading that part because I'm yeah. like, oh my god! But I, it's more so like <laughs> that. It's like I wanted to give the context of it, but that last part, the as a wise man once pointed out, you only need one bullet to blow someone's brains yeah. out. So we only blow each other up once; we'd still be dead. <laughs> it's wild that we could have picked this book too earlier in the time of like reading, and it wouldn't have been know. as relevant. But because it, it would have been a very different experience, yeah. just yes, like a month sure. ago. Honestly, yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, well, yeah. let me read some good quotes here. I got, yeah. where do you get your ideas? There's a place mm-hmm. in Fairfield, Iowa. I send them $10 and they send me back three ideas. <laughs> I love that. Then uh, sex and danger. They went together like peace of mind and insurance premiums. Oh, my God. I circled that because I'm like, I hope we talk about this because I was like, <laughs> I don't think, I'm like, I don't think this even makes sense, but I like it. <laughs> it doesn't, but I like it. it, that, it it's, it's his pulpy noir type uh, narration there. <laughs> Very time is a flat circle. <laughs> yes. And then this one may be my favorite. I had no trouble identifying Ray. My psychic powers were operating at peak performance. <laughs> he had a name tag on. <laughs> that was that was a very funny part. <laughs> I like that a lot. Oh. Yeah. I guess that's probably Mark's saving grace is, as milk toast as he is. He is funny he at is, certain He points. is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Then I have a, a weird one here. Even with the normal layer of Los Angeles smog, it looked peaceful. Of course, a thousand people were murdered in L.A. each year. One more (laughs) death was not going to change the destiny of the world, I thought. Like, wow, just just slide right into there. You know, it's peaceful, but lots of people die. (laughs) Let's get dark with it. (laughs) Yeah. 
Then on my bad section is a line from the character Lieutenant Cocker. <laughs> Not Crocker. His name is Cocker. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, both of you. But just know one thing. If I find the tiniest bit of evidence that could be used to nail either of your asses, I'm going to go out and buy myself a big hammer. Do you get my drift? I, no, actually, did, I actually didn't get his drift. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> He's going to buy a big hammer to nail their asses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, I get that it would... That's what it is. That was literally, but at the time, I mean, I mean read that's it. it. Yeah. It, it, yeah, there's not a, there's not more to get. That's, yeah, that's literally that's, it. Yeah, right. I, but I was thinking, I'm like, is there, is there, am I missing some? Like, is, no. And I'm like, it's not sexual, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's, it's one line less impressive than your body's writing. Your, your, uh, your mouth is writing checks that your body can't cash or something. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> well, and that oh. brings us to last act, where we uh, give our final thoughts and ratings out of five pikes. Okay. So, Danielle, where you um, at? I I think this one is a a three pike for me. Three pikes. Okay. Yes. Do you have anything special on there, or just three um, flat? Three. I was going to say three flat. I'm I'm I like it, like as I like all Christopher Pike books. Well, I mean, I guess not all. I know you don't like all Christopher Pike books. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, I'm, I'm enjoying the experience trilogy. of Pike books, whether I yeah. like them or not. How about yes. that? Yes, yeah, that's what it is. It's like even if you don't. Same with um the one that I know I've I told you that I don't like the one that this reminds me of with the uh, the teenage writer um Master of Murder. Master I, of Murder. Yeah. yeah, I don't like Master of Murder, but like you said, I still enjoy the experience of a Pike novel. So mm -hmm. this this I think I like this one. In, in the way that you just don't really know what happens and that it's, it's a little bit yeah. open of like every, you know, everything that we talked about, it's like, are they this, are they, are, are they actually vampires? Like Cassie wants them to be, are they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, who were, who were the alumni alumni? Like who, you know, who were they? Was Vincent even really alive? Or were or, they, were they space lizards? Yes. Like I wanted them to right. be. <laughs> were they space lizards? Were, were they dying and getting to live out a final wish? Uh, but what a, what a terrible, tragic final wish to be living out. I don't know. And, yeah. um, yeah, there's just, I feel like there's, there's so many ways to think about it. And so, I, so I like that about it. Um, but again, yeah, I think I, I'm probably, you know, going to sound smutty for this, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's three because there wasn't enough smut. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree that, that, uh, that definitely detracts in my, uh, in my mind too. Cassie, how about you? I think I am going to give it three pikes and a telescope. Oh. Ah. I so like is that, that three and a half or is yeah. that just a telescope? But no, it's three and a half. And it's okay. I like it. I think I would have liked it more if I were younger because it's a lot like the other ones that I like. There's not enough mm -hmm. blood. I think there should be a lot more blood in this. Where you guys are like, give me more of the smut. I'm like, give me more of that good, good red stuff. And I did not get it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, there was a little bit too much ice cream. Honestly, oh, God damn it. Hang on. Can I do two and a half pikes and then the telescope so that it's flat three? Sure. Okay. That's what I want. I want. I don't. I think three and a half is a little bit too much considering how many times they ate ice cream. And then the fact that he was like, I can smell the sweet chocolate ice cream on her breath. That's disgusting. And that really, I'm going to take away half a star for that whole thing. Cause that, I, I love that that. <laughs> is is powerful enough to get yeah. you to reduce the score it, it, it really is yeah i just there's nothing that would smell good about that it's gross you're just like it's like somebody's like sitting next to cow manure and they're like wow this is so fragrantly delicious and i'm like no that's cow poop that smells bad like you can't trick me get your star away anyway so he doesn't get half a star for that but everything else i liked the timey wiminess was confusing but it was still entertaining and i think there are good like some good lessons and stuff about like you know, war is bad and don't be a dick and don't like treat your girlfriend like shit because there's a guy with a lot more money who will treat her better. And mm -hmm. yeah. And I learned a little bit about telescopes, at least from the cover. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and I feel weird because I'm also giving it a three. <laughs> um, 
And for many of the same reasons, like, like this would have been better to read as a young person because, um, you're not looking for much deep when you're reading it as a young person. Right. It feels deeper than it is, mm-hmm. you know, and with the, with the talk about world wars and everything that, that feels deeper because that is deeper, but ultimately the, the main plot is, is fairly shallow. But it is an enjoyable read. So it, that's why it puts it at that three. I'm going to have those three pikes jammed into the one thing we forgot to talk about, the bloody heart on the countertop oh, in yeah. the yes. kitchen. Yes. The that's only right. bit of blood, and I didn't even mention it, but it's only yeah. formaldehyde. So I can't imagine, like, it couldn't have been yeah, that freshly Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's not even a character's heart. Nope. I thought it was like a good, uh, like they didn't actually make this connection, but I thought because the guy has like heart problems, I thought that was like a good symbolism oh, sort of thing. I didn't make that connection. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I thought they were going to, but they didn't. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Cause I, Ray wouldn't know that. Right. Right. I thought, I thought it was a sign that I'm like, oh no, this is how he dies as he gets older. Vincent dies. They like, they cut Vincent's heart out and, yeah. and he's like, he's seeing what ha- how he dies like in the future and i'm like oh this is terrible and then it gets to where they're like oh nope it's probably an animal heart it smells like formaldehyde <laughs> yeah. it's it's not not let's new let's throw it in the fireplace yeah it's the next yeah. page too because they end the chapter with the heart with the thing in it like and then yes. they go to the next one it's just like oh but we were fine because it was formaldehyde yeah, yeah exactly like, no, that, was that was cheap yeah that was it was cheap. i agree <laughs> Well, let's wrap it up then. Uh, Danielle, where can our listeners find you online? You can find me at LSEP on Twitter, E-L-L-E-S-E-P, where I muse on all sorts of things besides Christopher Pike, like baseball and uh, (laughs) how capitalism is terrible and (laughs) all all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at Danielle Sepp, which is mainly just me posting pictures of my dog, Brandy. So if you like cute dogs, you can follow me there too. And I enjoy that feed. I like cute dogs. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Just like thanks for myself. Oh, me. I know. I'm just (laughs) nothing. (laughs) Okay. When she said thanks for you complimenting the dog. She was just like, and she's like, thank you. I grew them myself. Like, it just oh. sounded, like you're complimenting her tomato garden or something. Like, anyways, it wasn't worth repeating. I'm sorry for this. Anyways, I'll tell you where you can find me on the internet. <laughs> I don't know why you would, but if you want to come check out my stuff and talk to me or see what I talk about. Yeah, you can. On Twitter and Instagram, I am at Control Alt Cassie, C T R L A L T C A S S I E. You can also find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash let's get galactic. And I have an art shop where I sell books, art, lots of other stuff. And that is shop let's get galactic.com. <laughs> you got it. It was a great yes. segue. It was a, a very excellent segue. Thank you. <laughs> And you can find me at Cooper S. Beckett all over the internet. I will warn you, if you are looking at it right now, there might be a lot of uh, very strong opinions on, let's say, Texas and their dumbass politicians. Mm -hmm. um, Or, let's say, Russia and the uh, pretty much Nazi that's running roughshod uh, over other countries that don't belong to him. That's right. So, you know, lots of fun there on social media. You can also buy my books at cooperaspecket.com. They have less Nazis in them. <laughs> less Nazis. I can't is promise you they thing. have zero, but less. <laughs> we'll take less in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. Cassie, where can they find our show? You can find us on social media at the Pikecast. We would really love to see your books. If you show us your Christopher Pike collection, you can use the hashtag show us your Pike and we'll retweet you or share you to our stories when we see it. And you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Pikecast. And by supporting us there, you get early access to our episodes and cool things like stickers, bookmarks, stuff like that themed after the podcast. And we do love your comments, as you may have guessed from earlier. So please do continue to post comments on our website or on YouTube um, and rate us. It's very important. 
And we love to see the various versions of Pike books that are out there. Sometimes we come across hardcovers of the little books, and it's it's always exciting to see that or the alternate covers. So please do share those things with us. We really, really enjoy it. Yes. Okay, listeners, your homework for next week is Remember Me 3. <gasps> oh, oh, my And we're oh bringing gosh. back Grady Hendrix. We've got him wrestled away from his very busy schedule yes. to finish the trilogy with us. I love this for me. <laughs> so, selfishly, I, I, lo- I love that I get to, <laughs> because I know I've told you before, I love the Remember Me trilogy. So, uh, well, I mean, we're, yes. we're, uh, we're kind of fascinated how that's going to go after we were told how much it goes off the rails oh, and yeah. having just completed Final Friends. Yes. Well, and I know how much off the you, uh, you, you hated Remember Me Too, and re- Remember Me Too is a big old mess. Yes, um, yes it but is. But yes, Remember Me, first one, is is the perfect one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's among my favorite Pike books ever. Yeah, totally. Yes. But I can't wait to hear you all dish about the third one. I will be <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Well, listeners, until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> You survive the night, friends. You can peek out from under your covers and see the first blues of dawn out the window. Thanks for spending the night with the Pikecast, and we hope you'll join us again next time. Until then, Pikers, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>